Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the next episode. Today is Q&A. So through Instagram and all of our channels that Jess and I have and just text messages, we frequently get asked a lot of questions. A lot of them have to do with being a photographer or owning your own creative business or being a creative entrepreneur or travel or, or anything else, fill in the blank. And I thought it'd be fun to hop in here once a week or every two weeks, depending on the amount of questions you guys send me and answer as many questions as I can in the time we have together. So let's begin. And I'm an open book. You can Instagram me, you can DM me, you can put in the comments here and I will archive those for my weekly Q and A. Uh, Denise asks, what Enneagram number are you? I am an Enneagram number seven. As a seven, I'm naturally very optimistic. It's also labeled as the enthusiast, which if you couldn't tell, I love life and one of the reasons I have this channel is because I believe life is big and beautiful and worth living to the absolute fullest and I want to help everyone else see that and people especially photographers and creative entrepreneurs uh, that it's possible to fully live this life and I used to never want to take uh, a personality test for years and years I never took a personality test because the fear of this is going to put me in a box. If I take a test and it gives me a number or a series of letters or a title, that's gonna wrap me up in a box and label me and that's how I have to live life, which is such a funny thought, but it was very real. And I finally took a few and then I really geeked out and now I teach this stuff because I realized a personality test does not put you in a box, it actually does the exact opposite because we can't change how we were created, how we are wired, how we, our nature, but we can choose what we do with it. And that's a lot of the nurtured side of it. We can choose to learn and grow. And when I took uh, my Enneagram test and my Myers-Briggs and all those things, I realized how I function naturally. And that was really powerful because before when I wasn't taking the test, I didn't know how I function. I just kind of embraced who I was for whatever reason. But now that I know I'm a seven, which means I naturally lack the structure that a lot of ones and other sixes, other Enneagrams do, where they know like how to get things done naturally. So I have a day planner. I had to implement structure externally internally so that it would help me dial in uh, my productivity. And so if you haven't taken the Enneagram test, I highly recommend it. It is a starting point to learn who you are, who you can be. For instance, I know that I say a lot of things. I have a lot of ideas and I'm an, a verbal processor. And my wife, Jess, who's an Enneagram one, naturally takes everything out of my mouth as a promise. And when we were first married, this was a big issue because one time it was like Friday and I said, we should go to Disneyland on Monday. And I said it just, it was an idea. I forgot about it. Monday, Sunday night comes around and she says, what time are we leaving? And I thought, I have no idea what you're talking about. And you can imagine how things uh, digressed from there. But anyways, one of the benefits of knowing yourself and knowing how other people's function is what's coming out of my mouth might not be received like I think it is. So if I'm trying to communicate with a spouse or a bride or a groom or a business partner, I should probably understand how they receive things even though I'm saying it how I, how I think I hear it, they probably hear it differently. That's my favorite part about Enneagrams is you can learn yourself well enough to know how to function and you can also learn other people well enough how to communicate with them and receive what they're trying to say. We are the Crawfords asked advertising outlets. Do you only do word of mouth or any paid ads? That is a wonderful question. And in the photography space, Jess and I have never done paid ads. I have nothing against them. I, I use Facebook ads. Uh, for the other part of our business, which is the educating side and lets me talk to you guys. But if you are a photographer looking to gain business, my experience is unless you're in the first year and you just need some leads and you live in the middle of nowhere and there's nothing, then I would try some ads or networking paid opportunities. But realistically, it is a matter of connecting and word of mouth is a very broad statement. Word of mouth for me, I consider Instagram. And if you follow my wife Jess on Instagram, you see content every single day about weddings, about what we're doing. And it's a matter of doing that consistently. I'm a, I preach consistency all the time. Uh, so I don't do paid ads, I have nothing against them. But if you're asking the best way to generate 
brides and grooms and sessions, I would go reach for it. You can get on Instagram and you can search hashtags and you can send 100 DMs to 100 newly engaged people. And if one of them doesn't write you back, you can, you can, I'll give you my number and call me and yell at me and I'm gonna tell you send another 100 DMs because there are so many ways that we just kind of have, yeah, I know, I know it might work, but you don't activate them. So my, my advice to you would be to go reach out on social platforms to all your local vendors and keep being relevant, keep being top of mind and stay consistent until you get that yes. And usually after you get that first yes, things start to turn over. M. Franzetti asked, the best way to track follow-ups on leads? Excellent question. I'm a massive fan of following up. In fact, one of my next videos is about following up on leads. Half of the weddings Jess and I book is the second, third, or fourth email we send, even though we felt like we got ghosted. People get busy. I mean, ask yourself, how often do you respond to emails right away? I'm guilty of never. Uh, that's why I have someone help me with them. But uh, the best way I track leads is a system called HoneyBook. It's our CRM. It's where every single inquiry goes through. It's a software. Uh, I have a link below if you want to check them out. Uh, it basically, I have it set up in a way where I get an inquiry, I send a follow-up, a first follow-up response, and it tells me a day later if they didn't follow up. It says if they don't send an email back, send them this follow-up. And then it goes through four phases within a week's amount of time. And I have pre-written follow-ups that can just fire off saying, hey, I noticed you know you didn't get back. I know life gets busy. We'd love to chat still. Uh, so HoneyBook is my number one way to do that. There's a few other CRMs for photographers. I've tried most of them. With any software, client management software, there's going to be qualms. HoneyBook has the least and it's the most efficient. And if you guys want to try it, I am a, an affiliate with them and you can click the link below and there's a little special deal for you down there. Nurse Mari asks, what is your favorite workout? Oh, I am a big fan of Murph, which is a notorious CrossFit workout, which is a mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and a mile run. It is it's a terrible workout, but the reason I love it is because whenever I do it, we're with a big group of people and we're doing it to honor Murph and soldiers and there's a lot of tradition around that workout and I relate that to everyone being in it together, hurting like shit, and then celebrating after. So that would be my number one workout. Holly Birch Photo asks, what client gallery service do you use? Jess and I use CloudSpot, and we absolutely love CloudSpot. It is efficient. They just redid the back end of their store, and it's beautiful. You can actually see what prints look like in your house, and the email system inside. You can send things so efficiently. You can categorize things. As a photographer, I highly recommend CloudSpot. Also, links below if you want to check them out. Uh, we are the Crawfords asked, presets or color profiles, yay or nay? Uh, with presets, if you're saying like, do you Lightroom presets, editing presets, I think there's this odd stigma around presets, thinking like, oh, you didn't actually put in the work, you didn't do the time and color correct it yourself or, or whatever that means. No one cares how you get that result. As in your clients aren't going to say, I love your work, it's beautiful, but did you use a preset? That's just not a thing. I've been doing this for, for a long time and over 350 weddings, I've never had someone be like, what preset do you use? And judge me based on that. I think in the photography space, there's like this, oh, you don't know how to color correct yourself, maybe this and that. And I do highly recommend learning as much as you can about color correcting inside Lightroom or whatever editing software you have so you can be a pro at it. And Jess and I have been doing this so long. Jess's eyes for color is way greater than mine, so she takes care of that. And she's created our own quote unquote presets, which just means in Lightroom, it just says James and Jess that she batched herself and she can click and that goes on our photos before she does the real finicky work or editors do. Um, but I think presets are a great starting point. If you're struggling with how to get that look or tone or color or minty greens, whatever it is you want, I'd say go buy two or three presets and mess around with them and get them to where you want and learn from them. So I have nothing against them, but I just do recommend that you don't rely on them solely, that you use them as a starting point if you're going to use them. 
Jay Van Dyke Photos asked, what is the biggest lesson you learned when first starting your biz? Don't stop. I didn't at first cast a wide enough net. And what I mean by that is in the photography space, there's, and business in general, it's like niche, niche, niche down, niche down, niche down. And I agree. We have a very specific client, you know, we teach very specific things, we have a very specific niche of what Jess and I do. But when you're first starting out, it's silly to think, here's my ideal client, because you don't know what they are yet, and they don't know who you are yet. So I think if you're starting a photography business, cast a very wide net. Shoot as much as you can. I'm not saying go shoot everything, but if your thing is people, Go shoot people 24 seven, go do it for free, do it for pennies, say yes to every opportunity. And my friend Brittany Bruce actually teaches this in one of her courses of mini, like blowing up your business with mini sessions because you know that there has to be a critical mass point where people know who you are. You can't expect to shoot one or two weddings or one or two sessions or one or two seniors and all of a sudden be known around town. So when I say cast a wide net, I mean shoot as much as possible, show up as much as possible, consistently choose to keep shooting, to keep gaining, and it hits a point where the momentum kicks in, you start to get more inquiries, you start to niche down your client, you start to raise your prices, and then you can start going deeper and deeper within your niche. So when you, if you're first starting, the biggest mistake I made was not being humble enough to take everything I wanted to shoot. You know, I saw all these people I admired and thought, that's what I'm gonna do. They all started at the bottom, you know, staying in your lane, being inspired by me and Jess, being inspired by someone you look up to is amazing, but understand that I didn't start with my ideal client. I didn't start charging what I charge. I didn't start doing what I do. I started at the bottom and I chose to be inspired, but stay on my lane and choose to go as hard as I could and not quit. So cast a wide net, shoot whatever you can, gain experience, gain that momentum, and keep moving forward. Elizabeth Hill Photography asks, when is the next retreat? In May, dying to come. Excellent question, and yes, Jess and I are planning the next James and Jess retreat in Santa Barbara for spring, and we're thrilled as long as we're allowed to do it, as things open up and it's safe to do, of course, we will be hosting a retreat this coming spring in Santa Barbara. It's limited to about a dozen people and I will have more and more information on this channel, on our email list, in our Instagram, so stay tuned for that. Mm. Barat, one of my grooms, he asks, uh, what is your best margarita recipe? Excellent question. I only have one margarita recipe for a classic margarita, and I'm actually gonna do a video on it soon. So if you, if you scroll ahead, if you wait a day, if you're watching this today, if you're watching this in the future, and I've already done this, there's gonna be a margarita video. But essentially, it is three ingredients, it's one lime, it's two ounces of very nice tequila, and it is half a ounce of agave syrup shaken with ice, that's all you need. I learned that in a place called Rosie's Cantina in New York City, which is hilarious. But the margarita is also America's most famous and loved cocktail. I thought that was a cool fact. Ashley Snell Photography asks, what is my favorite place that Jess and I have ever been to? And that is very hard because as constant travelers, it's hard to pick one place. I would say in the past year, my favorite place I've been to was Lake Como, Italy. We got a photograph for so many reasons. One, it's Lake Como, Italy, which is just the most unreal place. It's, it's gorgeous. It's more gorgeous than you ever thought it was. And we also were able to photograph a dream wedding, these guys right here, and I was able to take one of my all-time favorite photos, this here, and so the emotional pull, plus it being like Como, has got to be at the very top of my list. I absolutely love it. I also love experiencing new places. You know, new York and Paris are my two favorite cities. Uh, Sayulita, Mexico is my favorite place in Mexico. There's so many places, but Lake Como right now, 
top of my list. Lisa Watson Photography asks, hi Lisa, uh, when are you coming to North Carolina? Actually, soon probably. I have some friends who I just found out last week that they're moving, their family's out there, they're moving back to North Carolina and they're two of our best friends, so that gives me a massive draw, even more so outside of business and life that I get to go uh, visit North Carolina and you will be the very first person to know when we book those tickets. JSE Photography asks, how do you stay creative during these times, especially with shooting less weddings? This is a fantastic question. If we've all, we all experienced last year and our weddings, we had 25 postponed weddings, not to mention all the other things that were going on and it got tricky, you know? When you're shooting con consistently, there's that creative drive that, that kind of fuels you. But in that time, when we're shooting less weddings, I just choose something here. This is, uh, my friend Meredith gave me this exercise and she said, if you were to take a day off from photography, you're not allowed to touch photography, talk about photography, think about photography at all, or whatever your industry is, if it's video, if it's design, all those things. What do you do? that's most entertaining to you. I'm not talking about turning on the TV. I'm not even talking about watching NBA, which is my, I love the NBA, but something creative that you do. For me, it's cocktails. I love cocktails. I love creating cocktails. I have a whole bar right here. I have every tool you need. And for me during quarantine, I mean, it was helpful that it was drinks, but I, if you go on my Instagram, I have 10 episodes of, I call the quarantine cantina. And it was just me using it as a creative outlet, sharing it with the world to stay creative with uh, video, with photo, with recipes. So whatever it is that you would do or that you desire to do that maybe you don't have time to do, if you had to shut off photography or your craft, what is it that you think in your head would be inspirational and be like, I've always wanted to try this or this is what I do for fun and lean into that more. Uh, Chris asks, what is your favorite cocktail? My all-time favorite cocktail that I could drink for breakfast, lunch, and dinner is the Negroni. It is a cocktail that's 100 and it's turning 102 years old this year, which is wild. And the best Negroni I've ever have had is at Dante's in New York City. It is, it's so simple. It's Campari gin and sweet vermouth. It is, I don't like sugar. I don't like sugary cocktails. It is the perfect balance between bitter and sweet. I absolutely love the Negroni. Someone asked, what is one thing no one knows about you? I don't own a pair of denim jeans. I don't own jeans. I have nothing against jeans. I don't like wearing them. I think that's it. I don't like wearing jeans, so I got rid of all my jeans years ago, so I don't own a piece of denim. And the last one I can answer here right now is when do you know to raise your prices? This is a question. This is probably one of the highest business questions I get asked in the photography world. When do you know to raise your prices? It's popular to say charge what you're worth and I agree with that. Know your worth, know your value, but you also have to understand that and outside what you're valuing yourself as, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of photographers and creatives and there's a market, a big wide open market that also determines your value or what you're worth to pay. Now there's this fine balance between charging what you know you're worth and the experience and charging into that confidently, there's also the other side of this double-edged sword that says, yes, I will pay that or I won't. And you could go into marketing and advertising and experience, but when do you know to raise your prices? It's very similar, like I said, when I first started. Dial it into a point where you're booking more than you can handle at a certain price. And when that happens, you know it's naturally time to elevate your prices because the demand is there. There's supply and there's demand. If the demand isn't there and you've booked one wedding, you want to book 20 weddings and you're at a price, clearly the market's saying, not right now. So you either have to adjust your marketing strategy, your experience, your work, and all of those pillars that I talk about with that builds a photography business, and then get to a point to where the demand is so high it makes sense to raise your prices. Okay, one more. This is one of my favorite questions is Jolie Jamie Lee asked, your favorite places in Santa Barbara, food or beaches anywhere, and favorite vacation spots. Excellent question. My all-time favorite restaurant on this planet happens to be in Santa Barbara and it's called The Lark. 
they opened the same around the same time we got married, so it's always been our spot. And even if that wasn't the case, greatest restaurant. They ha uh, they're owned by lovely people, and it's called Acme Hospitality, and they have several bars and restaurants in Santa Barbara. Unbelievable food, unbelievable service. The Lark is my number one restaurant recommendation to anyone uh, that goes. I actually linked their menu <laughs> below because I'm trying to just go take a look. It's amazing. And my favorite bar, my favorite local watering hole here is called The Good Lion. Owned by Good Lion Hospitality, they have a handful of bars around California, specifically in Santa Barbara, and they do remarkable things. That's where I learned a lot about cocktails. I am friends with all of them now, but I used to go there for hours. The second they open, sit at the bar and just bother them about technique, about cocktails, about flavors, and all those things. So the Lark and the Good Lion are my go-tos. Uh, one of my all-time favorite beaches in Santa Barbara is called Santa Claus Beach. It is a wide open, it's, it's in Carpinteria technically, it's like 15 minutes south of me, but it is like my ultimate layout all day at the beach, beach day, which it's 80 degrees outside right now. I'm probably headed there after this video. So that's what I got this week for Q&A, guys. Thank you for sending in those questions. And like I said, I'm an open book. I love answering questions. I love communicating. You can slide in the DMs with questions. You can comment here with questions. Uh, if you like seeing these videos, I would love if you hit that subscribe button and like this post. And like I said, keep those questions coming, but I got some exciting videos ahead of this one, so I'm gonna get to work on those. And until next time, know that I'm here for you, know you are capable of great and amazing things, and I am here for you and your success. Have a fantastic day. I will see you in the next episode.